Do you think that fluency is more important than pronunciation? Hi guys, how have you been? It's Moni again from PT Magic. It's been a while. So today what I want to have a look at is speaking session and specifically we're going to uh, find out what is the most important task in speaking. So we all know that there are totally five different tasks in speaking which are Read out loud Repeat sentence Describe image Retail lecture And answer short questions Just to remind you, uh, in one of my other videos I did another experiment uh, with skipping retail lecture and still ending up getting 89 in speaking and for some reason a lot of people have been messaging me uh, or like emailing me asking if they should skip retail lecture in order to score high in speaking Wait, should I do it? Should I do a timer? And the answer is absolutely not guys You should never ever skip any task in PTE uh, like especially in speaking Don't do it man Just don't do it and you know like even though I it looks like I lost only one point in speaking but I actually lost more than that because the real speaking score is more than 90 it's just an experiment to show you that even if you didn't do well in retail lecture you still have chance to achieve 79 in speaking I said don't worry about it anyways in order to identify the critical part uh, task in speaking um, what I did was uh, I attempted mock test A on ptepractice.com again and uh, this time I skipped with a lot and let's have a look at my results So from here we can see that I lost a lot of points in pronunciation and also my speaking dropped to 67 and even though the fluency is still okay at uh, 80 points uh, because my pronunciation was not too good and there was no content in read aloud that's why I lost significant points uh, in speaking. You can generally trace it back to one big bad decision. Another experiment is skipping described image and uh, for this I attempted uh, mock test B. quite similar to the one before and my speaking score is just over 60 um, but pronunciation is pretty low with fluency being 90 however if you look at the vocabulary score it's very low at only 49 so it means I'm losing a lot of content in the described image words cannot begin to describe the injustice that that picture does to you what about repeat sentence? So I did not test that, but if we go back to my uh, one of my like, old videos with repeat sentence and recommendation, you could see that by only doing repeat sentence, I got almost 30 points in speaking. Still, I believe that we should all be consistent in speaking uh, and maintain both fluency and pronunciation. Uh, and speaking of that, do you think that fluency is more important than pronunciation? Perception, are you speaking English? No. To answer these questions, I just wanted to share with you our latest uh, case with one of our students who did the test last week and achieved 79 plus all bands uh, and specifically her speaking was at 85 even though her pronunciation was only 48 So she realized that it was very arduous for her to fix her pronunciation so she started to focus more on fluency and her pitch uh, thus uh, was able to increase her score in speaking. Perfect pitch. So I guess having a bad pronunciation is not the end of the world if you are able to fix your flow and your pitch and also do well in the task like repeat sentence then you can score high in speaking. So if I repeat that crazy shit, you... 
um, and if you're not too sure about your speaking you can also email me your recordings to moni at btemagic.com.au to receive a feedback and now let's check out a few recordings from her who got 48 pronunciation and 90 fluency Two sisters were at a dinner party when the conversation turned to upbringing. The elder sister started to say that her parents had been very strict and that she had been rather frightened of them. Her sister, younger by two years, interrupted in amazement. What are you talking about? She said, our parents were very lenient. The Japanese tea ceremony is a ritual tour influenced by Buddhism, in which green tea is prepared and served to a small group of guests in a peaceful setting. The ceremony can take as long as four hours, and there are many traditional gestures that both the server and the guests must perform. Augustus was given the powers of an absolute monarch, but he presented himself as the preserver of republican traditions. He treated the Senate or State Council with great respect and was made consul year after year. He successfully reduced the political power of the army by retiring many soldiers, but giving them land or money to keep their loyalty. The picture below shows a comparison between different trout styles. We can see that the size is ranging from 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. There are four trout in the picture. The first one is more than 15 years old with a size of 60. The second one is 8 years old with a size of 50. The third one is 3 years old with a size of 30. And the final one is one year old with a size of 20. We can also see that there are different colors in the picture from red, yellow, white, and blue. So in conclusion, the picture shows different child size ranging from 15 years old to 1 years old. The picture below shows a simple circuit with light. We can see that in the picture, there are two main elements. The first one is a battery in black and gold color. The second one is a light bulb in white color. We can also see that the electricity light is moving from the negative side of the battery towards the light bulb and then move towards the positive side of the battery. In conclusion, the picture shows a simple circuit with light with the black and gold color battery and the white light bulb. We can see that a lot of information can be seen from the picture. Today, we're going to recount heroic tales of superhuman feats of strength. When in the face of disaster, some people are said to have summoned up incredible physical power to lift a car off of an accident victim, move giant rocks, or like Big John of Song, single-handedly hold up a collapsing beam to let the other miners escape. There's even the case where the MD-500D helicopter crashed in 1988, pinning the pilot under shallow water, and his burly friend, nicknamed Tiny, ran over and lifted the one-ton helicopter enough for the pilot to be pulled out. And of course, the list goes on and on and on. In each of these cases, some aspect of leverage or buoyancy probably played some role in reducing the magnitude of the feat to something more believable. And even lifting many cars by several inches still leaves most of its weight supported by the suspension springs. But our purpose today is not to debunk any of these specific stories. The majority of them are anecdotal, and interestingly, not repeatable. In many cases, the person who summoned the super strength later tried it again only to find that they couldn't do it. Basically, what we have is a respectably large body of anecdotal evidence that suggests that in times of crisis, danger, or fear, some people have the ability to temporarily exercise superhuman strength. The speaker was talking about Superman or the ability of humans to develop significant physical power in the time of disaster. There are anecdotes to this story that it's possible for humans to develop temporary massive trends. For example, the case of Colorado in 1995, the case in 2009 in 1960, and in 1988 with the case of a helicopter. There are some aspects to those debunked stories that they are not repeatable. 
and they only develop in the time of crisis, danger, or fear without any evidence. If you have been watching my videos, you probably already noticed that I always use real cases and practical approach to deal with BTE. So I will be showing you more videos like these in the future with uh, different cases from our students. So please don't forget to click the subscribe button below. And until next time guys, bye!